Now everything has become clear. So we can proceed to the next step. Um, the first step was getting the state diagram, which we already have. So these are our, this is our state diagram. Um, the next step is constructing the state transition table. Um, in general, a state transition table has these main columns, the present state, the next state, the output, and the flip-flop input. If there is any external input, uh, we need to add one more column in the table. Alright, notice that it is only the state that we need to define its presence and next values because these values correspond to the output of the flip-flop devices. Now let's label the column more detail based on the number of bits for each quantities. In the prior discussion, we have shown that the state is 3 bits. So we label um, let me turn on the grid for better presentation. Okay, so um, we label the state with Q2. Um, again, Q2, Q1, Q0, because the state is 3 bits. Uh, you can also use the other symbols like um, A, B, C, or anything. Okay, for the next state, we normally denote with the uh, superscript plus to indicate the next state, Q2 plus, Q1 plus, and Q0 plus. The output is also 3 bits. So let's label the output as Y2 y1, y0. As for the flip-flop, we need to use three units um, of them, the three units flip-flop, because the system, uh, the state is three bits. Um, that corresponds to the three uh, bit states. The specific columns depend on the flip-flop types. If, for example, we use JK flip-flop, we need to have J and K for each fit flop, such that J two, uh, J two K two, J one K one, and J zero K zero. But for simplicity, let's use the D flip flop that we have here. Um, so the columns for the flip flop inputs are D two, D one, D zero because a D flip flop has only single input. Okay, now let's fill out the table, the state transition table. First, we list all the three bit combination for the present state. So it's simply 0, 0, 0 until 1, 1, 1. Okay, here we have the states um, 0, 2, 3, 5, 6, which are the use states. So 0, uh, 2, 3, 5, 6. So there are use states. And the states 1, uh, 1, 4, and 7 which are the unused states. Next, we can fill out the next state column according to the state diagram. So, after 0 is 2. After 0, 2. After 2, 3. After 3, 5. After 5, 6. And after 6, 0. 
because the counter must repeat. Okay, now let's turn to the output column. <clears throat> I've mentioned before that the value for output equals to state. But the question remain is, is it the present state or the next state? So the answer is the output equals to the present state because the output indicates the present results of the system while the next state describes what will happen in the next clock cycle. So we fill out um, 0, 2, 3, 5, 6. That is the output equals to the present state. Of the used state. Okay, next, how about the flip flop input? First, we need to know what is the flip flop type and what is the characteristic of the flip flop. So, for the flip flop, the next state equals to the flip flop input. The next state equals to the flip flop input. Q plus equals to D. So, we can copy the values from the uh, next state column uh, sorry I try one more try um, I can copy this and I paste it here um, but um, bear in mind that this characteristic uh, is only exclusive for D flip-flop, not the other types like JK or T flip-flop. And then the remaining problem is what we are uh, going to do with the rows correspond to the unused states. So there are a few approaches, but perhaps the simplest way is by assigning the don't care for them. So... Um, for the, the row that corresponds to the unused states, we can simply assign don't cares. Sorry. Don't cares for all of them. Um, and this completed our state transition table. All right, now we are in the final step of the design, that is, constructing the counter circuit using uh, suitable logic devices. The main component in the circuit is the flip-flop, of course, that serve as the memory storage device that keeps the information of, the, of states to be used in the next computation cycle. Okay, we should know that we need to use three units of flip-flop because we have seen at the beginning of the design that the states is 3 bits. Here we already have 3 flip-flops. Uh, let me clear, sorry. Here we already have 3 units of flip-flops. And they are D flip-flop because we have decided to use D flip-flop when we construct our state transition table. From the state transition table, the state is described as Q2, Q1, Q0. Um, so, let me adjust this a little bit. Um, so let uh, assign each of the flip-flop with the binary digit of the state such as this is Q2, this is Q1, this is Q0. Uh, so this is the state. Um, maybe I use a thicker line. So this is the state. Then we should know that the state need to be fed back uh, to, to compute the flip-flop inputs. In other words, we need to derive the Boolean expression for D2, D1, and D0. This can be done by referring to the state transition table and uh, derive the expression of the flip-flop inputs using any suitable approach like the k-maps. Um, so here, here are the k-maps. 
one for each D flip flop. D2, this is for D2, this is for D1, and this is for D0. Bear in mind that the flip flop input depends on the present state. The flip flop input depends on the present state. So the variable for the K maps are um, Q2, Q1, Q0. I think this step is very straightforward. That does not require too much explanation. Um, so this is Q2, Q1, Q0 as well. Q0 and label. Label the columns and the row for the K maps. And then transferring the values from the uh, state transition table to the K maps. You know, this part. Oh, I think uh, let me make it uh, very quick. I copy this for. Um, so we can easily refer to the values. Okay, I remove some unrelated. So um, we transfer the values from the K map. Uh, sorry, from the state transition table to the K map. K -map. So we get uh, zero. Don't care. Zero one. Don't care, one, zero, don't care for D2. And then one, don't care, one, zero, don't care, one, zero, don't care for D1. And zero, don't care, one, one, don't care, zero, zero, don't care. Okay, let me check uh, one more time before we proceed. Mm, um, okay, every, everything seems fine. So let's do some grouping. So here, one group. Um, here, here, and this, and this. Okay, so the expression for D2 is, so D, okay, D2 equals to Q0, um, remove this. D1 equals to, um, this is Q1 bar, or Q2 bar, Q0 bar, and D0 is simply Q2 bar, Q1. So here are the K maps, um, and then, uh, um, Uh, we we can I think copy this because we want to complete our circuits. Forget it. I think uh, because D two equals to Q zero, and then uh, this is Q zero. The second expression, d1 equals to q1 bar or q2 bar, q0 bar, can simply be realized using uh, OR gates and AND gates. So take an OR gate and AND gate. So q1 bar, this is q1 bar, and q2 bar, q0 bar. Q2 bar, Q0 bar, and the uh, expression for D0, Q2 bar, Q1 is obviously can be realized with a single AND gate. Um, sorry for the uh, my drawing. So Q2 bar, Q1, and um, as for the uh, complemented flip-flop outputs like uh, Q2 bar, Q0 bar, they are always available because 
um, flip-flop devices normally come with the complementary outputs like in here we have uh, Q2 bar, Q1 bar, um, Q0 bar. You can draw the complete connections from the um, flip-flop output uh, to show the feedback like um, here Q0 bar goes to here uh, Q0 goes to here okay uh, but to me labeling the wires with the variables is already sufficient and lastly we need to produce the outputs for the counter but in fact it is already there because I've, as I've already mentioned a few times the output for a counter in general equals to the state so this is in fact y2 and this is y1 and this is y0 and and then we get the output okay so this is the state and this is the output so the output is the number in the counting sequence and last but not least, um, don't forget to label the clock um, such that all flip-flop uh, shares the same clock signal to make it synchronous. So this is clock. Now we have completed the circuit design for the counter with uh, irregular sequence. To recap the design steps, first uh, we need to have the state diagram and secondly uh, we need to describe the related quantities in the state transition table and the third is we construct the circuits by deriving the boolean expression based on the values from the state transition table so that's all for now thanks for watching